Hey guys, how's it going? Right, um, I've had a few requests um, wanting to see a little bit more of this machine that I've built um, and wanting to know a little bit more about Hyperspin. So I thought what I'd do is I'd just make a quick video just showing you a little bit more about it. Um, it's kind of hard for me to tell you sort of anything too useful, um, mostly because it's all pretty straightforward really, but um, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the hardware first. So. Um, this is an Antec case, it's a mini ITX case and there's actually two models of these. Um, this is a 150 watt version and the other one you can get is a 65 watt version and that's obviously in reference to the power supply that they come with. Now the 150 watt version has a power supply built in and um, the 65 watt version has a, an external power supply like a, a laptop power supply. Um, the reason I went for the 150 watt version is so that um, the machine I was going to run in it needed a bit more power. Like many ITX cases are generally designed for the Intel Atom processors, but they're not really that good for emulation. Like um, if you're going to run, say, MAME for example, on it, um, you'll find if you've got a very old version of MAME it'll work fine, but if you run a later version of MAME, its requirements are actually a lot higher. And you'll notice, if you want to test that out, um, you'll find that a lot of the, especially the older games, when you go and run them, they'll work fine. But um, if you go and play something like, uh, say, Mortal Kombat 2, for example, you'll find even the dual core atoms will actually struggle a bit to run them smoothly. So I went for, and I'd recommend, going for a dual core Pentium or AMD processor or higher so um, this particular machine runs an Intel E6500 so I'll just show you inside of it you can see they um, come with a nice little stand so that you can um, stand it up or you can lay it flat put the cover off so there's not a lot of room in there as you can see um, but in there we have our Intel E6500, so it's just a dual core Pentium. Um, and this mother motherboard is a um, Intel ITX motherboard. Uh, I can't remember the exact model number, um, but if you do a search on Google for Intel ITX and have a look at one that can run an LGA775 processor, um, there's only, well at the time when I brought this, there's only two to choose from. Um, this particular one though, um, I made sure I got one that it doesn't have any um, analog output and that it, it, there's no composite or VGA, it's um, only got DVI or um, HDMI because um, my 46 inch TV runs um, HDMI so I wanted something that was I was able to just plug in and have the sound travel across. Because um, I wanted, when I was building this, I actually, I hadn't started collecting consoles at that point, and I sort of said to myself that I wasn't going to pour all the money into um, buying all these old machines like the Sega Mega Drives and the um, the Super Nintendos and that sort of thing. Because I, I thought, well, if I can emulate it, what's the point? Um, what I didn't realise though is how much better it is actually playing on the real hardware um, and hence after doing this I um, well I started collecting machines. So in these um, I'm running a two and a half inch SATA hard disk. Um, this one's only, uh, this one's a, uh, what is that, 160 gig. Um, You'll find that for emulation you really don't need a very big hard drive because most of the ROMs and things just aren't really that large. Um, I think I've got several hundred games or something probably into this, probably thousands actually, I'm not sure. Um, and I think I've chewed up about 20 or 40 gigs, so you really don't need a lot. Um, with these cases, if you want to have an optical drive, you have to get one of the laptop um, optical drives, one of those little slot loading tray type things um, and you've got to get an adapter but for me what I do is I actually have uh, all my emulator folders and everything shared on a network and I just transfer everything in um, through network. Um, and what else have I got? Uh, 
runs two gigs of RAM. Um, I've just got two one gig sticks in there. You can see with this board, you know, there's not really a lot of room in here, so they've had to sacrifice a few things. Um, you don't get an IDE connector or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to build something that was small and compact and kind of console-like. Because as I was saying, I mean, in one of my earlier videos, I control the whole thing off a Sega Saturn controller. And I don't really, I mean, I, I can't stand trying to play um, a game off a keyboard or anything like that. And I don't particularly like the the likes of the PlayStation controllers for emulation either because the, the four button arrangement, I mean it matches up fine with the Super Nintendo but if you want to play any of your arcade games or anything you need sort of something that's got six front facing buttons so. But yeah, um, hardware wise it's sort of about it. Um, they come with a couple of um, you know, built in fan um, to keep it a bit cool. Um, and that there's a fan for the power supply because the power supply actually lives in underneath in there and just see it in there and you've got to do with the power supply in particular you've got to do your maths a little bit um, I actually spent a bit of time um, looking at Intel's website figuring out how much um, power their processor would draw and um, how much power a hard drive would draw and I really tried to make sure that everything I was going to put in here um, wouldn't stress the power supply out and I've managed to do it so that this does still have some headroom um, but sacrifices have been made and I run one hard disk the CPU, the RAM, the motherboard that's it, I've, well as I said I, I couldn't be bothered getting an adapter for a CD-ROM anyway but you want to keep it as minimal as possible and the other thing is because this case is quite crammed um, and although you'll see there's lots of you know lots of air uh, grilling in there for the air to escape um, it is quite compact so you've got to be a little bit careful of heat so um, an E6500 CPU is not not a bad choice um, these boards apparently will run some of the quad cores but really you don't need it um, and the other thing too is the onboard graphics in this is one is a Intel HD I think of 4500 which by PC standards it isn't a great video card but having said that though um, it's not bad for emulation like I can run all of the Sega Model 2 um, machines and they, they emulate perfectly on it there's no slowdown no you know the graphics card just doesn't hold me back um, one other thing I do though is when I'm running this I actually don't run it um, at like 1080p or anything that that screen um, that I have is perfectly capable of it but I find that for the games net they just don't really look much better anyway so I think I run it at a relatively low res um, yeah so I guess uh, what else can I say about it um, it's just a PC really in a small box okay so software wise um, what some people seem to get stuck on is um, you take the likes of Hyperspin in there and they think that it's you know going to be quite a mission to set up um, but with the likes of Hyperspin it's only a front end all of the work is actually involved in setting up your emulators so if you've ever um, downloaded MAME before or um, SNES 90X or um, uh, Kegan, Kega Fusion or whatever it's called um, if you've got those running your games, um, then the rest is actually a walk in the park because the like Hyperspin, all that does is it just goes and points to the emulators. So if you're going to set up a machine, what you need to do is first thing you need to do is set up Windows XP, and I re absolutely recommend you stick with Windows XP um, for building emulated machines. So install Windows XP. Um, and then go and install all your drivers and make sure the machine just you know works um, then go and download any of the emulators that you want to run so if you want to run a Model 2 emulator or if you want to run MAME or any of the Sega ones or just you know go and download them and just set them up as per regular um, then all you need to do is go and choose your front end now on my big cabinet and on the um, the small machine back over in the dining room um, they run um, Hyperspin um, and I like to run Hyperspin because it's very um, 
well, you know, it, it just it looks pretty. I mean, every game has its own background and has a little video playing and all that. Um, and very easy to cycle through everything and just easy for people to see. But if you are going to use hardware that's, you know, not quite as powerful, so um, you want to, you know, build a bit of a cheaper machine, the other one you can use is um, one called, well, this particular machine here, because there's not a terribly grunty PC in this, I use um, one called Mala, so I'll just hit the button. So this is one called Mala, and you can see that it still has the videos playing. Just picking your games isn't quite as, as flashy. But, oh, actually, I'll just... Very easy to see in here today. A bit too much sunlight coming through. I need to paint my windows black. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so still joystick controlled. So, yeah, not quite as flashy, but as a trade off though, by not being as flashy, then the requirements aren't quite as high. When you go to these websites to um, download these front ends, whether it be Mala or whether it be uh, Hyperspin, you find that there's great forums on there already with a lot of guys who've been using it a long time and very, you know, they find it very easy to use. But in particular, Hyperspin is very easy to set up. Um, you just install it. Um, in fact, I don't even think it has an installer. I think you just download it and then you can just run the program from there. And you can go into the service menu for it and you can tell it like it fully supports joysticks and everything so if you if instead of using a keyboard encoder if you're using a USB joystick it supports joysticks so you can tell it you know what is up and what is down and you know all really straightforward so again all you need to do is install Windows XP install your emulators and make sure they all work and then just go and get the likes of Hyperspin or whatever you want and just tell it where the emulators are and then start it up and it goes. Um, to get the the likes of the um, the videos and that you need to go to um, well I've actually got all my movies and that I've got them from EMU uh, Emu Movies Emu supports all the major front ends so with Hyperspin um, that uses um, Adobe Flash video files, so .flv files, that's the sort of video format that needs to be in. Whereas the likes of Mala um, that uses AVIs, and again it's, it, it supports them. Um, with Hyperspin, um, I'm actually a, I, I'm a donator to Hyperspin because I really like what they do. Um, but you don't need to be, you can get it for free if you want. And the same with the Emmy movies. But one tip I will give you um, see a lot of guys go and get the likes of MAME and then they go and download a big ROM pack for it and they put like 6,000 ROMs in or however many that MAME supports and honestly, especially with the likes of Hyperspin, I'd recommend you don't do that because you've got to remember that you're, you've got to find your game by using this joystick and going up or down. So if you've got 6,000 games to cycle through, you're going to be there forever. Like you'll spend more time looking at all these clones of games and if you keep the numbers right. down, um, see with Emmy movies, you can download the movies for free, um, singly. So um, if you want to download the whole lot as a bulk pack, then you need to donate to them, which again I've done. So, you know, it's, it's easier for me to go and do it. But if you just want to set it up and have a bit of a try, then just try setting it up with one or two games first and then move on to 10 or 20 or whatever you like just to see whether it's um, going to work. I can't really think of what else I can s sort of suggest to help you guys so um, what I'll do is I'll get this video uploaded and then pretty much any questions you've got from there just just message me or if you want another video made on anything it's, it's, it won't be a problem I'll do that for you so um, yeah I Hopefully I've sort of gone in depth enough, but if I haven't, hey, not a problem at all. Just let me know. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I, I hope it's sort of given you a bit of a tip or two, and we'll hear from you later.